Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Card Art, and we're here to paint some fun little butterflies this morning. So I'm so glad that you're here. It's a very easy project. I think you will love it. So I am coming to you this morning from um, Tinker's Card Art, my art page. I'm also coming to you on online paint night. So I welcome you all to hop on in and, and take a look and take a peek at what we're doing this morning. So please say hello when you pop on and let me know. I'd love to know where you're watching from. And um, I'm going I'm, I'm going to, to you live today through StreamYard. So it will ask you, if you have not watched me through StreamYard before, it'll ask you to authorize it. That way I can see who's watching. But if not, um, just tell me who you are in the comments. But I can see all your comments. Oh, Alyssa, good morning. Thanks for jumping in. And Deb, oh, Nance, good morning. Good morning, everyone. And I kind of thought I was doing an earlier segment this morning, but I was a little mistaken. So I wanted to hop in anyways uh, at nine now and paint with you a little bit. So we're doing a butterfly project. They're so super simple to paint. Wait till you see. You can use this, this method of painting butterflies on anything at all. It doesn't have to be on paper or note cards. It just happens to be what I'm painting on this morning. You could take your acrylic paints and paint them on anything you want. And if you love butterflies, just use these little elements and you can paint grasses and flowers around them in whatever you would like. Good morning, good morning. So I am painting on little note cards today. The idea came from my good friend, Michelle from Inner Journey Studios. And if you wanna look up Michelle, she's an amazing artist as well and mixed media. And she gave me the idea to paint on note cards this morning. Hey, Mary, good morning. And um, I'm glad to see you guys all here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for popping in. Thanks for selling, saying hello. And do let me know where you're watching from, from. That's one little thing I love to keep an eye on to see who's close by and who is far away. I'm painting to you this morning. I have um, recently, uh, my husband and I have recently purchased a house in Lakeland, Florida. So you can see how light it is around me. Generally, I come from you from my uh, basement studio in New England. So you're going to get a little touch of Florida and New England. So, um, oh, Deb, you're in Canada. And Charlotte, good morning, my friend. Charlotte's not too far from me now in Alabama now that I'm in Florida sometimes. So it was quite interesting trying to set my studio up in this morning, running around with all of the different windows to see how the light is because I'm not used to this much light, which is fabulous. But it was a little glary sometimes. So I hope it all works out today. And so I'm just using my regular acrylic paints this morning. You can use whatever you have. Some of the colors you guys know, I like the Liquitex um, paints for some of the colors and then deco art. Use whatever you have. Whatever you have for acrylics will work. Whatever you have for brushes will work. This is pretty simple. We're gonna paint our butterfly with acrylics and then we are going to use paint markers to do all of the detailing so it couldn't be simpler. And I am going to watch your comments here. So any questions as we go, please just throw them in. And I will make up a tracer for these little guys. I just did them freehand. I was just doing some sketching, um, just kind of figuring out the little sections of the butterflies and how they work. But I'm happy to make a tracer up with you. I misplaced my Apple Pencil, but I have a new one coming. So in a day or two, I'll have the tracers made. If you would like one, send me a message. Just send me a direct message and I will do that. Oh, from Texas. Great. And that's um, that's uh, someplace I have not been in, and will make it to someday soon, hopefully. Okay. Paint markers. Any brand will do. I really like the Posca markers. I don't have all my supplies here in Florida, so I did find I did brought, brought some Sharpie paint markers. Those worked fine. You might want thin or heavy uh, strokes. It's up to you. And if you want to play around, they're very simple to sketch. The butterflies are simple. You really only need to, you know, I just start with a little head. I'll do it in marker so you can see better. Um, I just start with a little round head for a bot for the head and just make a little body. So simple. You of course would do this with pencil, but I'm just gonna so that you can see me. Lisa, yes, I will make the tracers up, but remind me by just sending me a message um, and I will get those to you. And then there's all different shapes, so you don't have to have it exact. They have two wings on each side, right? You know that. So you could just simply draw. And it's so simple. Even if it's not exactly the shape of a butterfly you've seen, no one's going to know. It's going to be perceived as a butterfly. And that's all you need to start. That's all we're starting with today is a little outline like that. 
then we're going to just paint some color in and then I'm going to show you how to do the detailing with the marker to get the little markings on there. And I appreciate you guys watching it. I know it's early and um, unexpected. I just kind of went on kind of quickly this morning. So here's a, here's a little butterfly I did here on the note card. The note cards, again, I didn't have all my supplies here. So these are just, I happen to have some of my Avery note cards that I use for printing. I don't generally paint on these, but it does work. Um, I usually have some note cards and greeting cards that I buy in packs at, at the the art shops or Walmart even carries them. They're like a blank pack of 25 maybe cards and note uh, in envelopes, but I didn't have them. So I, I did this. You could cut your paper up and just make a little card. It's so easy. And you could paint them small for gift tags, which would really be kind of cool too. So we're going to start and I'm going to show you how I painted this blue one. So these are just, like I said, all my little practice sketches. I'll set this guy here. I just, I just Google butterfly images and I get ideas from that for colors although you can use your imagination you can make them any color you like they don't really have to be exact as a real one would be I've sketched out a few here let us paint this little guy I have a light pencil sketch and that's all I'm going to start with this one I'll do the same color so you can see I have this turquoise -y and blue butterfly a few brushes I whatever you have you could use a flat or a filbert for this part um, whatever you have, work with, and then if you find you want to go and get more supplies, go ahead. But first, just get started. Just get started with what you have. That's the uh, the best way to go. And I've just got some paints. You can see them here. I have some turquoises. You don't need all these colors. I just have them out. And a darker blue. So the turquoise little part, I did more at the bottom here. And I'm going to paint the painted part fairly quickly so that I can blend a little bit with my colors. Acrylics dry fast, so I paint a little fast when I want to blend them wet in wet. And I'm just going to start with getting just a little bit of the color on there. I'm going to work two wings at a time. You could always do one at a time if you real you you know you want it to be um, you know you're blending a little slower. You could just do one wing at a time. I like to shade them on the inside, so I'm going to take a little of that dark turquoise and a little of my blue. I'm going to go right along where the body would be there. And then I'm going to just kind of dry the, and, and just brush those colors together. I will keep going in with some more of my turquoise, and I'm just sort of trying to brush these two colors together. I'm going to add a little white. I want it a little lighter. It doesn't have to be a perfect blend. I just want it a little darker on those inside bits. The paint dries really fast on paper, so I work, I've got to kind of work with it a little bit. But I'm going to get that little inside a little blended. I'm going to keep drying my brush off because I don't want to drag that dark color now into my lighter turquoise. But I'm going to get a little lighter. I've got turquoise on my brush. I drag a little white into it. And I'm going to work my way out. And then I want to get just a little lighter out towards the edge of the wings, which I will just add some white to this. And I know I'm going kind of fast, but like I said, it's so that I could sort of just get, see how that white's really blending in with that turquoise in the middle easily because it is still a little wet. And when it's dry, if I think it needs to be lighter, I could go back and add a little highlight. So I'm basically just filling in the little body of the butterfly. I'm not worrying about the black bits and the dots and all that. Don't overwhelm yourself. Just do little bits step at a time. It's a little more blue up here with a little turquoise, but I'm going to get that dark bit in first. So darkest against the body here. We get a little more blue. And really that's drying as I put it down, but I'm just gonna work with it. I'm gonna make it blend. Again, I always dry my brush off to go into the lighter color. I'll get it a little turquoisey and a little light blue. I think it was turquoisey out towards the edges, but a little light blue. I'll make up with some white into that blue. And, and when I put it on, if I want to adjust it, it looks a little darker than I'd like. I'll just go right on top of it with just the white and I'll get the shade I want. And you can see how it's a little bit stripes of color because it's not quite blended yet. But once we get the color on there, I can do a quick little coat over it and really blend it out nice. A little lighter towards the edge. I think I'll take straight white. 
When I'm working with acrylics, I really like to get a blend like I do when I paint with oils. And so I kind of force the acrylic paint either with a couple of different methods, either trying to blend it wet and wet, which I'm doing here, or washing a little wash of color over, double loading my brush sometimes with a watery, um, like a watercolor uh, kind of, not texture to my paint, but how my, my paint would be a little bit more like watercolor and I'll give it a lot of washes. So there's two different ways that I, that I do um, get colors to blend for me. And on a little bit of turquoise back in there. I like a little of the turquoise in there too. And you can see how that little inside shadow is still um, not blended as nice. So I just kind of take those colors a little bit quickly now while this other bit is wet. And I can really get that to be a nice blend there then. And I'm blending mostly with the dry brush. So that's why I keep wiping it off. And then I just sort of soften it. And when we get all our little lines on there, it's going to, um, you won't even notice your blends here. So don't work at it too much. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you for watching. Good to see you here. And Deb, yeah, the colors, you can use any color you want. So I've been doing the blue ones, but I'm going to go ahead and maybe do a purple one now. And of course, the Monarch Butterfly with the orange and yellow, we'll do one of those. So let's let that dry a little bit. And then we'll put a color on these other little note cards. And then we'll go back and I'll show you how easy it is to detail with a marker. Good. Um, and I'm using a paint marker. I like the way it looks a little light paint. You could use a Sharpie or a marker you have. But the paint markers are fun. There's actually paint in the barrel. And they come in a fine tip, a broader tip. And even Posca comes with a brush tip now, which is pretty cool. So they really make it, if you're a little hesitant on the details, it really makes it easy for you to jump in and, and do some detail work. All right, so let's do cut something with the pinks and the purples, and then we'll do that monarch with the orange. And like I said, I just pull up pictures on it on my computer. I have it on my iPad here, just pictures of butterflies, and I just use them for reference. But you could just use your imagination and do any color you want. Good morning, Kim. Thanks for joining. Um, we're having fun with butterflies this morning. All right, so I'm just pulling out some pinks and purples. I'll just put out a little. I put too much paint out. Look, you only need a little dab. I really to um, uh, put out too much a lot of times. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I uh, have to watch it and just do little bits at a time more. Some nice shades of purple and pink. And same thing, we're gonna, I always get it a little darker by the body because it'd be shadow. I get a little lighter towards the edge of the wing, not worrying that this is gonna all be covered in black later. And we do have those little holes where we want some color to peek through. So you'll see when I get to the, um, detailing part, how that works for us. And again, any questions, let me know. And I will, I'm gonna be home on uh, Wednesday tomorrow. And I hopefully my Apple pencil will arrive and I will make the tracers. But remind me guys, if I don't remember, cause I will be happy to share those. Um, and I did put in the, I think it's in the description. Yeah, way up the top at the description, in the first comment, I put a link to my, private art community. And if you'd like to join me over there, I would love that. I do a lot of little tutorials and it's a nice community of sharing with other uh, artists and creatives. And the link is there. And I will post this video there as well as the tracers too. So you can always find them there as well. And I would love it if you joined me. And I've got just a little dark bit there, but let's get into some lighter pinks and like I said, you can see why now you might want to do one wing at a time because you can really blend that pretty easily. By the time we get over here, it sometimes gets a little bit dried, but it's just a matter of re-wetting. On your wood surfaces, slate, other things, you might get a little longer time, of course, to blend that. Something like fabric and, and paper here, it's a little more, uh, it's a little, it dries just a little faster. It's, the paint sinks into the to the uh, paper and the paint and it just dries it kind of quick. And I want to get some pinks out here. I'm going to get a uh, clean off my brush because I'm picking up a little bit of the dark. So I want it kind of light on the edges. So a little white, a little pink. You can make your pinks up super easy. All you need is red and white. So don't feel like you have to go get all of the fancy colors either. So um, 
It would be fun with some neon colors too, like a real neon pink and orange. Wouldn't that be cool? These are a little softer. You can see how light, much lighter I'm getting on that edge. I'm just actually taking just white on my brush at this point, but because there's a little trace of pink in there and the pink is here that we're blending into, it does lighten it up. And we'll get some pinks. I'm very dark in the crease here, so I want a little lighter there. And remember, you can paint on just about anything. If you've been following me, you see me painting on the craziest things. Old oil cans, um, ice skates. <laughs> you know, Michelle just gave me another idea, too, of roller skates. That would be fun. So that's going to be my, I'll have to look for an old pair of roller skates. Oh, Charlotte, of course. I can imagine that by the end of today, you'll be showing me pictures of your butterfly cards, I'm sure. Charlotte is in my art membership, and she is painting up a storm. Beautiful pieces. I do have, like I said, my free group over there that if you want to join, but I also have a couple of paid art memberships if you want to jump in and even paint a little more with me. We do um, a couple of live events a month that I paint with you live, just, you know, it's a small group, one-on-one -on -one almost. And then I have two other recorded things for you a month. So you get quite a bit, you have lots to pick from. We do animals and still lifes and fl uh, florals and landscapes and seascapes, just a little bit of everything every month. Okay, so now we have a little bit of a pink butterfly looking a little dark to me still. As you guys know, um, I see things in the camera better than in front of me to correct and fix things. And that's a good tip because if you are finishing or working on your painting and something's kind of bothering you about it, take a picture of it or hold it up in a mirror because you'll really see some, what, what your eyes are going to see it a little differently. So, and I really didn't go too purple on this guy. So I'm going to lighten that up really too. A lighter shade. All right, so this will be perfect when we get our details on. Let's leave that guy. Let's do a little monarch, which is that orangey uh, yellow butterfly. And it doesn't even have to be a particular shape. People are going to recognize it immediately because of that color. Um, oh, Deb, yes, uh, you're right. You're, you're, I forgot you are in Florida here too. Yes, it's a beautiful morning. I can't wait to go out and go for a walk. It's just beautiful. I just am so enjoying getting up every day and having the sun shining um, and having it bright and not gray. I mean, I know it's getting nice. Actually, it's going to be nice at home. I'm, I'm heading home to Massachusetts tomorrow, and um, I understand it's getting warmer there, too, so that's good. So I'm going to have just a few yellows and some orange. And we will get a little monarch painted. And I think I might even add a little thistle. I love painting thistle. And... A lot of the images that I saw when I was Googling are little monarchs on thistles. So that's what I think I'll add a little thistle. So if you guys want to uh, see how that is done, I'm going to do the butterfly first and then do all the detailing for you guys who might not have a little bit more time. You'll see that method and then I'll do the thistle afterwards for anyone that wants to hang around. But remember, I always record these sessions too. So you don't have to worry about being, if you have to leave or, or you miss it. I'll always post the replays and I always put them up on YouTube too. So if you follow me over there on YouTube, you will also find a um, lot of videos there, a lot of free videos, a lot of full length classes uh, over on YouTube, Tinker's Cart Art. So look me up over there and let me get a few pictures here of this little monarch. There we are. Just, just yellow, really yellow and orange, little white highlights. You can paint it any way you want. I might just go a little... I seem to like to go a little deeper on the wings that are closer to the body and then get lighter out here. So maybe we'll get more yellow out here. We'll get a little orange here. He's got a little bit of a wing peeking through back here, which, of course, because it's behind, would be a little darker. I may see if I have a deeper orange or just grab a little red to deepen that up a little bit. Remember, I like to always tell you about your primary colors. And the reason is, hi, Karen, good morning. I can't wait to hear my neighbor. Karen is my sister-in-law who is going to be moving in this same community where my brother already lives. 
So we're going to make it into the Hughes compound, right, Karen? Yes. And then you can come and paint with me. I'm so excited. Um, anyway, primary colors. You don't have to have all the colors. I mean, we love to have all the colors. And I go into the store and buy all the colors, too. But you don't need them. So if you want to get started and don't want to put a big investment out there, you can get your primaries. And you can mix all of the colors that I am using with the primaries. And I try to. In the membership, I, I do start with a little less colors. And we do mix. And I will always tell you how to mix the colors as well, even if you have all the colors. So. Um, don't think it's a big, you know, if you, you're interested in painting and you haven't really jumped in yet, don't think you have to spend a lot of money. A few inexpensive brushes and some basic colors. The craft paints like we're using here are very inexpensive. So I really just want you to jump in and paint, that's all, and not, um, not have to spend a fortune. So I'm going to just jump onto my yellow now to make it a little lighter on the edge. Can you see how I've given this little dark shadow here just because that wing is behind? And then the ends are going to be a brighter yellow. I might even put a little white in there. Sometimes I even use white if my colors are a little, um, they don't want to budge and blend too much. Sometimes I add a little white and it sort of helps me with my, with my blending of the colors. So there's the colors. Yellow is really transparent, so it's sort of kind of uh, almost blending right on top of that orange nicely. If I have to get them to budge, remember, I just go back and kind of re-wet the colors. I re-wet the orange a little bit. And then I'm going to take a tiny tad of white. And let's see what that does. I want to go a little lighter out here. And that would just sort of help me blend a little bit, too. And I think that's probably good enough. Again, we don't need a perfect blend in there because we are putting all that little, the little black vein lines and, and whatnot. So there we are, three different butterflies, three different colors. And the first ones are pretty dry. When you want to use your paint markers, make sure your paint is really dry, especially when I'm doing canvas or something. Um, takes a little longer to dry. Really let it sit a good while before you touch it with your paint marker or any marker for that matter, because if it's just a little bit damp, it will seize your marker up. And those paint markers, they're not too pricey, but they, they still cost money and you don't want to ruin them on the first time out. So do make sure what you're going to paint on is dry. So this guy, we're gonna let that sit a little bit. We've got our blue one all dry. And paint marker, like I said, I only had these big heavy um, Sharpie ones, although I did find a little Pintar one, which might have a little bit of ink in it still. But now all you need to do is just draw your little head. So I draw the little head. I get my body right in there. It's just this little long shape. Super simple. I might use the little um, marker for his antennas. You could simply make an antenna like these guys like I did. It's just a little lines. But sometimes for fun, I like to just make a little curly Q one. It gives it a more little whimsical look. And that's all you need for the body. Pretty, pretty easy. And then I want to a little bit separate where those little lines are. So I'm just going to take a pencil and just give myself a little guide. And what I did is I made, like I said, some little sketches when I was looking at pictures to get an idea of where they are. They don't have to be perfect. You can almost make them up and just do little ovals. Like, but I kind of wanted to have a, have a better idea of what I was doing because it looked a little bit like I needed a roadmap. So I'm just going to sketch in some of these little sections just so I have them. They don't have to be perfect. You can see my pencil lines there, yeah. So then it was just, I'm just kind of uh, sketching in what I saw. But remember, you do these a few times, you're going to really know where they go. And, and like I said, sometimes I'm really just making it up. So I'm just kind of making that one up. And then I'm making some little small areas. See those little small lines? The end of the butterfly, sometimes they have the little colored bits showing through. So what I'm doing is almost leaving little windows for that. For that. And I'm just going to worry about the little white dots later. And then I'm sort of going to copy this a little bit best I can. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, then I did a little bit like this. As this one's very different, it can be. I don't think, see why not. And any extra room out here, I sort of just leave little window holes. So that's what my little sketch and pencil looks like on top. 
It's pretty easy. You could do it with a little chalk if you rather. And these guys are rather small on the on the note cards. Remember, you could paint them really big. I thought of, of just a big square canvas, eight or ten by ten, with a big butterfly painted on it would be so fun. Um, you could do lots of fun things with the backgrounds too, just abstract sort of things. So then I am just. It's really this is really fun and relaxing. It's kind of like coloring. Honestly, you're just gonna. It's like a little kind of a fun project you could get them all to this point and just sit down and you know relax and put some music on and just have fun with all this and you can use your smaller marker if you want I went kind of heavy on mine I think let's see how this one works I'm going to color in with the big one though because this seems a little tedious So what's everybody been painting lately? Spring things? I know we just came off of Easter and we all had a lot of fun Easter projects. I'd love to know what you all have been working on. Don't worry this on your lines if you don't get your pencil lines exact because you can erase them afterwards. So that's pretty easy. But yeah, I'd love to hear what you're painting and do show me. I love when you post anything you've painted on our community pages. It is so fun to see all the great work that's out there. We're all here to support each other and help each other. If you have questions, like on my little community there, if you, you, you pop in, all of the other members are so wonderful and helpful. You ever have a question about a painting or just need some feedback, pop in there and just show it. It's really a fun, no judgment zone. Everybody's there having, you know, having fun painting. We don't take it too serious. Okay, so you can see I'm just going to color in now. You could do this. Now, if you didn't have the paint, you could certainly do this with, I mean, your markers. You could certainly do this with paint. It just goes a little quicker with the markers. This one, like I said, is probably a little too heavy, but it works. And I want to hold this up to show you once I get this one little section of the wing done. And what makes it the finishes it off nicely is when we put that white bits on there on the edge too. So you can see all I'm doing is coloring around my little uh, sections I drew there. And there, it seems a little like watching paint dry, doesn't it? <laughs> but I wanted to show you this technique and I would love to see what you do with it. And so it really, you just need a few colors of paint and a marker and something to paint on. And I would try this on canvas when I get a chance to, but I like the idea of this. And Michelle had another great idea, and that was probably to do it maybe on a little lighter paper, and then you could sort of mod podge it on something. You know how people do that with the napkins a lot. I'm thinking you could do some little paintings of your own and do that same technique. So that is something we'll have to explore too. So the way, we hey, Lori, welcome, my friend. Um, Lori, remind you, Mia, you're in South Carolina, right? Not North. I can't, I was thinking of that this morning. I was thinking of you and uh, how we're not too far. We'll have to do a little get together. I do miss seeing you. And Cindy. Oh, a train would be cool. Um, are you, is he a train enthusiast and is there like a particular one you're going to try to paint or just in general i'd love to see that when you're done or even as you're working even as you go along we love to see you work i uh, don't want to miss anyone oh deb i've been crocheting too i'm making a uh afghan but i'm also making Oh, and they're right here, so I will show you because, you know, I'm like a squirrel with all the shiny things. I'm also making, let me find them. Oh, come on, you guys. Nothing's where you are when you want it, is it? Well, oh, here it is. I'm making a blanket for my son in Afghan with um, skulls. So I'm crocheting all the skulls, and then I'm going to do like granny squares around them. I'm not really a great crocheter. I just, if I have directions, I can follow them. But yeah, I, it's kind of fun because I can do it, you know, in the car, in front of the TV. And if you're like me, a lot of you are creative, and it's not just painting. We love to do all of the crafts and things. 
But when people say something to me about, well, I, I can't paint, I'm not artistic, I wasn't born with that talent, blah, blah, blah. It's not true. It's like something that you can, if you have a desire, you can learn it because you could just follow along with me step by step, just like I can crochet. Can I sit down and crochet without having that pattern or especially that video in front of me? No, I could not. I won't remember it. But when I have that available to me, then I can. So I want people that if you want to paint, you can do it. It's not that hard. So there's one of our little butterflies. And when that's dry, we will add some of those white bits. Um, let's hop in and do this one here. I've got to do a little sketch of my my my, my sections real quick. Uh, let's do that. And again, I'm just leaving some of these bits out here. You could almost do them without the sketch for these little squares and circles out here, but it just reminds me to do it. Boy, the wind's whipping up out there. I can really hear it. Favorites to paint, Deb. Me too. Always been. I've painted all my life. I'm My favorite is oil painting, plein air painting. Um, any kind of painting <laughs> on any surface. And it's just, once you do a few of these, you can almost without looking, just kind of sketch these little long shapes on here. And there, so that's pretty easy. Then again, it's just a pretty simple little butterfly body. There's nothing to them. I did those little antennas kind of thick, but that's okay. And let us get, and then kind of just follow that edge. Just outline it first. I'm going to just divide that little guy there. And I am just going to go with the heavy marker this time. And I'm gonna freehand some more of these little bits. They could be little, they could be big. And that's how I'm gonna start this guy. And I know this is not too complicated, but if you do have questions about it, please. And it is, Deb, this is pretty relaxing. It just reminds me like of Zen tangles of something too. You can kind of just really put a bunch out in front and then sort of, like I said, just do this filling in part. But it's really fun to finish them off with the little white dots, which I'll put on next. And that way if someone, you know, you guys have have at the time you can see how I finish them and then I'm going to work on the other one still. So that's the next um, little step, but it looks kind of weird, doesn't it, like that. But then when you get the black bits filled in, because they're usually darker on the ends of the wings like this, the kids would have fun with this. This is a pretty simple project if you wanted to do something with the kids. They love to draw butterflies in them, and they would have so much fun. They would be putting crowns on them and, you know, painting little, you could paint little ladybugs with them or other insects. And they'd be fun in a field, just really simple grasses, just brush stroke grasses, and then just put these guys all flying around in the sky part. And there's some really cool moths as well. I had a luna moth land um, in front of my store one day, and I just could not, I've seen pictures, but I could not believe it, how beautiful and huge it was. So there's a really, a lot of really cool moths. I think I might like to do some moths um, as well, because they are pretty fun. Lots of fun things coming up to paint. I've got, oh, you can't really see, oh, you can kind of see it on the back of me here. I'll pull that over. There's a little, um, painting I just did. I don't have a ton of my paintings down here yet to, sh to have to show you, but um, I've been working on a few little things. OK. 
tie the little ends. Okay, let's put on some of those little white bits so I can show you what that looks like. And it's these little, you see how they have the little white, just little dabs of color. And sometimes I will do, I'm going to do them two different ways because I want to have a little bit of a look where some of them are kind of transparent and, and not really perfect shapes because they aren't. You could just take on, I'm going to let this one dry a little bit. We'll go to this one. And I'm almost, oh, that's the one, that's already done. This one, I just dab on little random shapes of white here. You can see through it a little bit. Uh, and then I'm also going to dab some on with the end of my brush so they're more rounder and a little bit brighter white. But some of them, when you see them, are just really random. I like where they're almost like a little square bit of a stroke. And I'll show you the difference when we do the next little step. So you can see I just randomly put them on. Some of the strokes came out a little square, the little dabs or dashes. That's all we need for that. And then a great way to make dots on lots of things, snow, um, stars, whatnot, a stylus, a toothpick, the back of your brush, because I want some that are just a little brighter white. Can you see how those uh, are a little brighter? And you will when I hold it up to you, really. So then I just put some that I'm dabbing on a little heavier. They're more of a circle. I know some of the butterflies even have little dots on their bodies, but I'm leaving the body black and I'm just going to, I'm just going to do some. So you can see some are a little heavier, more of a circle, and then some are little dashes and it gives you a nice little natural look, I think. Deb, I know I was shocked. I know I've seen pictures, but when I ever saw that thing and it was like, it was like that big. It was so cool. I think it was so quick that I don't even think, I don't know if I even got a picture of it. I may have buried somewhere in my pictures, you know, how we have thousands of pictures and then try to find it. Um, but it is kind of cool. I did notice now on my iPhone, you can search in your pictures. And so if you want to search for dogs or insects or flowers, you can sort of sort a little bit. North, Laurie. Okay. I did drive through. I drove down here a couple of weeks ago and I did drive through. I was thinking of you. Okay. So that is the method. And I'm going to go and work a little more on the uh, other one and paint the thistle. But um, so pretty simple. Let's get something on this guy. This guy's looking a little too heavy with the black. So let's lighten it up a little bit with some white dots. So can you see how many different things that you could paint these on and just incorporate them into other paintings? You might have a floral painting and you want a little something. You could add a little butterfly. We just did, I think last month maybe, Charlotte, maybe last month in, in our membership, we did adding elements to your paintings. And what we did is we just got together one night and painted and practiced butterflies and ladybugs and hummingbirds and different things that you could just throw into a painting that you might have already done or are doing just to help you design some paintings instead of always having to go by a tracer and doing exactly what you've seen it's nice to kind of start designing your own and a way to do it is to you know learn to paint different elements that you can just put all together or add or embellish into a painting that you've already done So there you are. If you wanted to, maybe if, the, if it's really dark, you could take a little white on your brush, maybe a little light blue. I don't like to shade much uh, on black I, things. I, I use blue instead of gray all the time, a light blue. So you could take a very light blue if you wanted and just like stroke down the side of your butterfly just to have him, sh you know, just give him a little shadow. And that would kind of keep, you know, show his body up a little better. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you like them. I see you as Facebook user because I don't know your name, but you could put it in there. But I'm so glad you're here and like the butterflies. And I think they would be, this one is looking a little bit. I don't know if I separated his wings enough, but anyway, it is what it is. So with this little monarch, let's do his wings and then we'll paint a thistle. And uh, yeah. Oh, Deb, you're good. Um, I'm doing an afghan now where it's different patterns for like every stripe and 
so I'm learning all kinds of little patterns I've never done before. I would save my instructions because I would maybe pick out the ones I like and go back because I wouldn't recall. But I think next time I'd like to just make a free form one and just kind of use whatever, you know, I love the little popcorn one and some ladder ones and some cool stitches. But uh, yeah, share, share your pictures. Even if it's not a painted thing, we love to see what you're working on. So even if it's just in progress, that would be great. I would love to see them. Okay, let's go our little monarch guy. And I, he's got a little section showing here. I'm just going to kind of look at some pictures and get some ideas. Sometimes it's just like a big section like that. And there's little ones coming off it. Maybe we'll try that this time. And again, you don't have to be a slave to the picture. I'm just getting ideas of these little shapes of the sections that you see. Okay, that is enough. And like I said, I would probably be using a thinner uh, marker. This is a little heavy, but it is a little quicker. So we'll just divide this. How we're going to have the wing by doing the outline first. Simple as that. And then we're just going to go around these sections. And I'm just going to freehand some of these little areas out there. There. And again, I'm just leaving some little areas that will show the color through. So I might just leave little sections around. So you can sketch them or you can just freehand them out like I'm doing there. And I'm just going to trace my bigger sections. They're kind of teardroppy shaped a little bit. Kind of like coloring. So there we are with our little monarch. Give it some of those white bits. Oh, he needs little antennas. And when I make those, I sort of press down a little bit with the marker. So it's a little heavier at the end and then I lighten up. So it's kind of like a little heavier and then lighter. I sort of that sort of kind of that sort of kind of look. Yeah, Lisa, you could certainly Lisa, you could use, use a sharpie instead of a paint pen. It would work perfectly fine. The difference is is the paint pen is paint, so it's a little more maybe a little more raised, has a little more texture. But I've used sharpies too, uh, so yeah, that 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 works for detail, of course, especially if that's what you have on hand. Thanks, Judy. They are fun. Okay, so get in a few little. The monarchs have quite a bit of dots. They almost have a series of kind of like two rows. I didn't really leave enough on the end. You know, I could, I could go back and just, it seemed like they had a little bit more rows of, rather than all these little things, it seemed like it had more rows of white. I'm not going to worry too much, but I'm going to give myself a little bit more of an edge here to make more of the white bits. And ideally, I should let that dry more, but I can certainly uh, do some of these little bits for now. And I like it, though, that even if it's a little wet and it blends in a little, it looks a little more natural. And then we just throw a few of those little brighter ones on and it really pops. Yeah. Charlotte, I'm going to put this one. I have a little thistle sketched here. It's kind of light. You might not see it, but yes, I'm going to do a thistle on that one. I have not painted thistles in a long while, but I have a reference pick here. And really, to paint things, it comes down to basically lights and darks to give your, you know, your object or your element form. So when I have something new and I've not painted before, I'm not sure how I'm doing it. 
I just sort of look at it and, and add shadows on one side, highlights on another, and it sort of gives that form. It's pretty basic, and this is a small little piece. It doesn't have to be really super detailed. You get the texture of those little purple bits and a little bit of the thistly texture on the on the little round ball part, and you're good. So there's our monarch and you can always go back because sometimes you say oh i did all this beautiful shading and work underneath and now all i see is like one color you could go back in here if you wanted to at any time and you know kind of adjust things or add a little brights and, and, and highlights if you need to um even a little texture you could go back in and do that i don't think i really need to on this one it's so little but you could if you felt you wanted to touch something up you can go back with your brush Oh, Deb, um, I'm wondering it, if you can do it in the comments here. It, if you might not be able to do it in the comments here, but if you can, just go to my page, Tinker's Cart Art, or the community, my Mighty Networks community link is up top. And that's more of a private community. It's like Facebook, but it's private. Um, it's on my own platform. You have the discussion feed, just like we have on Facebook, and I do things, classes and things in there, but I like it because it's private and you're not hammered with ads and, and inappropriate stuff and whatnot. So if you want to join me over in Mighty Networks, you'll be able to post the picture there or right on the face. I do have the Facebook page too. So yeah, either. Okay. So there we are. Again, you could add little highlights like this little guy is a little bit dark looking to me for his body. So I think I would take a little light blue and just around, you know, one side, just kind of give him a little highlight that sort of just makes him stand out from all of that black. So let's go in, just do a little thistle now. Let's leave these guys so you can see them. You don't need to see all these drawings really now. So let's move that aside and you guys can see these. Anyway, just to get some ideas. And I'd love to see them in different colors too. There should be, could be all sorts of colors that you could do for them. All right, so I've got my thistle and mostly it's just greens and purples. So how would I paint an element that I don't have a directions on or have done recently? I just look at the color. So I have a purple and I want a dark purple. I know because I'll need that for shading. Sometimes if I would need to add a little bit of black or something to a color to darken it up or a paint gray if I don't have a dark enough shade. And then a light color I can always get by adding white. That thistle, they're more purpley pink though let me get some more i've got that purple out i've got some more pink it's more purpley pink so we're just going to kind of eyeball it and then as you paint it you can just adjust the colors greens i will need a dark green and a light green and maybe a middle so usually it's a dark light and middle shade when you're doing an object but again you can make those just from adding white to get your light and then in a dark maybe to get a little shadow color. I have a nice dark green here, but it might, oh, and you can't see it because it's off camera. A nice dark green here. And if it's not dark enough, then I might add a little bit of phthalo blue or a little Payne's gray or black. Hey, Gleason Marie, good morning. Thank you. I hope everybody in your house is feeling better today. And um, I wish I was here a little longer to see you guys when you came through Florida. That would be fun. But soon enough, we'll have that sleepover, right? Um, okay. Thistle. I am going to just grab this brush because it's in my hand and I will do the purpley top part first. It looks like it's dark along here and it's lighter at the tips. And let's just jump in and figure out what we're going to do for that. So I want a dark purple down here. I'm going to use these little strokes because that's just what it looks like. It's little strokes. And let me just thin the paint down. When I'm doing some detail work or especially thin lines like this, I want to have my paint thin down with water. And I might even want to go to a smaller liner brush in a minute, but let me just get the shape in, starting from the bottom to the top, because these thistles have that thin, raggedy edge on top. So can you see that? So I'm going top to bottom just so I can get that raggedy, thin edge up there. And it is pretty... Um, they're, they're pretty thin little strokes, and just because I've got that nice white background, they'll show up. I could take a little liner brush now and just make some that are just almost like when I'm painting hair on something. So you can see those strokes now. 
really thin little strokes. I want to bring some of the dark up into it. So I'm just going to take some of that darker purple now and bring that up. And I think I am going to paint it like I do fur. I'm going to just put little strokes of lights and darks. It's a little darker down here. And I'm going to thin that paint down because I didn't thin that dark purple down. Uh, okay. Hey, see, see, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Good to see you. I know, Lisa Marie, but, but soon. Hopefully, we'll be back again pretty soon. And I'm just putting in strokes lighter at the top, a little darker at the bottom. And I put the dark down first. It gave me that kind of an anchor there to paint on top of. And now I'm doing the little individual strokes. If I was on a blue background or a colored background, I would probably get very white on the top, but because we have the white paper, it's not going to really show. So I'm going to take some white, though, and, and paint these same strokes in on the body of it towards the top, maybe, not, not down in the bottom. But if I get some nice white strokes in here. And I'm taking these strokes, and can you see I'm kind of curving a little bit to the left, getting a little straighter, curving to the right. And you can see now the white... I would have used more to the top, but because of the because of the white background, I put my little white strokes in, and that's probably enough. You don't have to get crazy with it. That's enough for the to read as a little thistle, and then it has that little bulby shape there, and that's green. And then we'll do one, maybe a couple little leaves, and they've got those little nettles and those pointy leaves. So that shape alone will read as a thistle. So it'll be cool. Let's just get, let me just get in there with a the green. I'll go with the middle shade of green to just kind of place it, see where it's going to be. And then we can go on top of that and add our darks and lights and maybe a little texture. The little uh, ball part here has all these little thorny things sticking out, which we can make similar to just that with the, with the, um, with the little liner brush. Just this sort of a cup shape, say. And then we've got a stem, of course. And then we'll have a little of those crazy looking leaves coming up, which are, let's see, they're very pokey. Actually, the bottom of the thistle here has some of this sort of thing coming down. And then we're just going to get an idea where this is going to be. And it's got little, like, pointy bits. And this is just a little road map for us to go back now and put on the light and dark. So basically that just places it. Now we know where it is. And then we wanted a little dark and a little light. I'll go with the dark first. So let's see if this dark green, it looks very transparent to me, which is the case with some of the craft paints. They're just a little light. That's why I sometimes like the Liquitex, yeah, the fluids I use a lot. Um, these I just happen to have here in the tubes. And that's a phthalo green. And with a tiny touch of like blue and black, it gives me a nice dark green that I can use for a shadow. That green was a little translucent. Okay, so where would it be darker? Let's see. Would If I don't really know and I'm not really going by a picture, I sort of just do a left-hand side is dark. That's very dark, but that's okay. I want it to be dark. It would probably be dark under here because that little bit is on top. And then I'm going to stick with the being on the left because we'll just say, okay, the sun's coming from this, the light source is coming from this way, and we're just going to make it up as we go along. So we'll keep it, like if this little cup is on top of these little bits, there'd be a little shadow on the top. The left side of the stem, I'm going to sort of go on the left side of this bits of the leaf. And the, and the paint is dried already, so of course, because it's dried, I might just, now that that's a little wet, I might pop right into that color I used to base it with, just to smudge it, just to get it blended a little bit, a little more coverage. If I was on canvas or something, it might stay even wet enough for me to go and put the light right on. So I am going to actually give it a little glaze. The uh, yellow doesn't really show up much, but sometimes I put it on just to give it that little glaze of, of this is not really dry, so it's not really a glaze, but a little bit of punch of yellow. And then I'm going to get some light green or white on the other side. 
So let me just, again, I'm just drying the brush off in between. I'm going to grab some white. See if any of this paint is still wet enough to blend. And it is, which is cool. And because, again, the white paper, the white highlight's not showing up a lot, but it, it does make it give it that rounded look. On these little guys, maybe a little stroke. Right-hand side of the stem, a little dab of white. And then just kind of looking at each bit of this petal and giving it a little white on the right side. And because it's looking a little chalky because the green is still, is dry, not still. And I could just go back with a little of that green and even yellow. Sometimes I just add little colors onto my pieces just to throw it in there. Now, so that gives it shape. You can see now it looks a little bit like it's rounded, right? Because we've got that really dark there. We'll get a little bit more light here. Blend that in. But this has that texture I want to use. I want to get that sort of a texture on there. So I think I might just go back to that little liner brush. Maybe get just a little bit of a lighter green, just so it shows up on there. Sometimes on some sides I might do darker, but it's just got these little pointy bits. Uh, get a little bit of a light a little yellow into that light I'm using just for some color. And it's showing up really nice on the dark side. I might go in and grab a little bit of dark just to make that a little bit of that pointy look that we've got going on there. Just some sort of dark green. Throw a few in. And I want it to see the texture on that side. It's very light, but let me just get a little darker and Throw a few of those. Oops, that's a huge one. Huge little. And I'll hold this up in one sec. So you can see that. Sometimes if I'm painting a really whimsical thistle, I will just simply put a cross hatch design on it. But I really wanted to paint these little pointy bits. It kind of grew a little bit down here, but not a big deal. The, the stem got very dark on one side, very light on one side, and we lost that middle shade of green. So I'm just taking a little dab of that, just stick that down the middle. And I don't think we need to do a lot with the little, uh, the little leafy things. You could add more points on them if you wanted with your brush, but I did it kind of so rough that it looks pointy. The, the little bits look a little pointy. So that you could just add all any kind of flower you like and add a butterfly and again looking at the camera it looks lopsided i wouldn't notice it in person but so i would just take maybe a little bit more and fix that side a little bit so there we are simple as that so what do you think you guys what do you think it wasn't so hard it's kind of a fun technique these guys look a little heavy to me because i'm using that huge marker i would use a finer one next time um, but still fun, and you can have a nice little note card to send to someone. You know, isn't it nice maybe to get something in the real mail sometimes? Or on gift tags, I think they would be great too. Little scattered specks on the white, like water. Sort of fill it out. What, um, fill out which part, Charlotte? I think I, I couldn't really think of any backgrounds, and I thought well, if it's on the note card, I can just leave that as the white as the background. But that's uh, that's kind of cool. So any other questions? I'm happy to answer them, and if it's later on, you can just put it on the replay, and I'll answer you there too. Thank you, Karen. They are fun and so simple, and it would be fun almost to do a little note card with maybe the three little ones on it or something. The flower in the middle and three little butterflies around. There's so much you can do. I love doing just these simple elements sometimes so that you can incorporate them in other projects. Hey, but thanks for hanging out with me this morning, everyone. Oh, yes. Oh, you're right. Yes. I love to like spatter. Sometimes I will just spatter with my watercolor or watered down paint with just, you could do it with a toothbrush. Or if I just want it in a few places, I will simply, I'll do it right on something here. Let's see. Sometimes I'll just do it with a toothbrush, which I don't have. But if you wanted to spatter, I do this in a lot of paintings. I get really watered down paint. I probably wouldn't do it in purple, but, and let's move these because the spattering goes everywhere. 
You can also just do it with a paintbrush by just taking the paintbrush simply and, and tapping it. Can you see? And you get, it makes a cool little background. Or even if I'm doing a landscape or something and the, and the foreground's a little, eh, need something, I just spatter some earth tone colors there. Just gives it kind of a looser, um, painterly, more painterly look. Yeah, Charlotte, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Mary Jane. That's okay. I'm going to um, download the recording and I'll put it up on Facebook and I'll also put it in my private group, but it'll also be on YouTube. So I know there's lots of places, but I'd love it if you followed me in all the places and, and you know, shared it out and let people know if they want to paint. It's so easy. Hey, Juanita, good morning. Nice to see you. I love the, I love painting, but I love the comments. I know I chit chat a little bit sometimes, but it's kind of nice to see everybody and and it's not like I'm painting by myself. I'm painting with all of you guys, which is fabulous. So anyways, I'm going to go get my walk in and I will uh, check the comments and I will get tracers out there. So it, just send me a, a private message even to remind me. I don't I sometimes try to re don't remember all the things, but I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much and uh, happy painting. We'll see you all soon.